Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luca, and I'm here today in front of the uh, EPIX um, office in Novi Sad, which is in Serbia. And it's internally better known as Trilateral. So uh, a little bit about, about myself. Uh, I distinctly, distinctly remember uh, the moment when I uh, was first interested in this 3D world. And this was like uh, uh, 25 or more years ago when I first saw the uh, Toy Story. And this was the inciting moment that was then uh, fueled for a couple of years with the uh, first generation of PlayStation console games. So uh, ever since then, I knew what I wanted to do. And here I am today um, as um, a lead character artist. And I uh, have dealing with uh, texturing mostly for the past seven years. Uh, so uh, here's a brief summary of what we are going to go through today. And there is some theory before this. But we are basically going to create the metahuman identity. And then we are going to uh, use the maps from, from the scan that we have to, to transfer that to the uh, low poly topology and to the UV space of that uh, low poly mesh. And then we are going to redo the um, ZBrush sculpts, both for neutral and the expressions. And then we are going to bake out all the normal maps from that. And then we are going to use the normal maps to fabricate the blood flow maps. So we got only one input, which is a scan for the neutral. So pretty much everything else needs to be invented. <clears throat> and finally, we are going to, to test that out in the Unreal Engine to see how it plays out. Um, so uh, before becoming a uh, part of Epic, we were responsible for many um, high-end characters in a number of AAA games. And uh, apart from that, a standard service, we were also developing our own technology, which at the time was internally known as the Gene Splicer. And the main idea was uh, something along the lines uh, like, uh, wouldn't it be great to take all these characters, mix them up, and produce even more uh, completely new but equally realistic characters? So this is like the aftermath of that. This is a screenshot from the Quixel Bridge, where you can uh, pick any of the metahumans. There are like dozens of those. They're free to download. And they all have been mixed up from real people in the database. But none of these is actually real. They are all um, uh, just a you know, combination of, of those in the database. So uh, this very technology is the foundation of what you know today as the metahuman. And, uh, um, Ever since we joined Epic Games, our most important objective was to develop the metahumans to their full potential. So uh, this meant that the initial breakthrough, uh, regardless of the uh, response within the industry, which was fantastic, was just the beginning. And even more reassuring is the fact that uh, the metahumans are trending even outside the uh, scope demographic. So I captured this uh, book on my vacation in Greece. It's by Deepak Chopra. I assume it has nothing to do with our metahumans, but it's there, so you can check it out. So um, at the time when the metahuman creator was first announced, the um, main selling point was something along the lines of, uh, would you appreciate if there was a tool that could help you author uh, realistic AAA characters by the thousands uh, in a matter of just a fraction of time currently spent on that same task? So uh, to show that we could deliver on that promise, uh, metahumans were used in the epics, the Ma Matrix Awakens demo. <clears throat> and there you could see, uh, among uh, other incredible innovations, uh, some 35,000 metahumans just roaming the city streets. And moreover, not only that they were used in abundance as NPCs, but one of the hero characters next to Neo and Trinity is Io, that you're seeing right now on the screen. And she is a metahuman. So uh, this was to showcase that the metahumans can inhabit the hero territory as well. So this was the potential, at least. But in reality, we understood that uh, users would want more control over the nuanced characteristics of their protagonists. And this meant, <coughs> but, well, the, yeah, well, how, how could we achieve that? <coughs> well, the same way. We used to do it for, for years, 
as a service via incorporating the scan likeness of a client's choice into the uh, rig. And this time around, you could do, do all that by yourself. And this became possible with the introduction of the mesh to metaqueon um, plugin for Unreal Engine 5. So now you could feed your own scan to the tool, and with just a couple of clicks within minutes, you could transform any specific likeness to a metahuman. And while you're in the cloud, you could assign textures, a hair, and clothing that describes your character the best. <clears throat> and after uh, finishing with all that, uh, you could just uh, download the game-ready asset from, from the Quixel Bridge. And all this sounds fantastic, right? And it is, but as we establish ourselves by doing the internal tests and by uh, having a finger on the, on the pulse of the trends in the community and by receiving some feedback, uh, we came to realize that this initially achieved likeness uh, could be upgraded even further because it is highly dependent on the textures and not just geometry. So currently, you are able to uh, create a pretty good look-alike of your specific talent, but in order to have uh, undeniable likeness, you would need to use bespoke textures of your specific uh, character. So uh, the mesh to metahuman, in conjunction with the metahuman creator, works best on the characters that, yeah, that are on the left or younger side of this texture slider. And this is because the um, um, people who, belong to, who do not belong to any older age group do not have as many as identifiable uh, facial landmarks or simply put wrinkles. So the wrinkles alongside with other aging related features uh, tend to be specific to a person and they do not, uh, they, they are not uh, shared between different people, so they are pretty much interchangeable. They are not interchangeable, and this makes it hard to uh, satisfy all the infinite possibilities of how the human skin, the aging skin, could actually look, even with the exceptionally large database of real people. So I'm here today to offer a way by which you could um, have the best of both worlds. So um, this will require some artistic intervention, and we did think of maybe uh, implementing some ways of uh, making some of these processes automatic, but by the look of it, when, when dealing with the custom textures, there's, there's no way around of actually uh, making your hands a little bit dirty and uh, uh, doing the work, because uh, we will always need to um, edit uh, our inputs in some way. Um, on the bright side, the artists will always have a job because um, there's plenty of work to do regardless of how the technology progresses. So it's just different type of work, but there's still a bunch of work. So this is the um, likeness that we are going to try to recreate today. And I wish we had a like, uh, older character for all those uh, wrinkles that I mentioned. But even though this guy is fairly young, there are a couple of quite... Um, identifiable, right, wrinkles that make him unique in that sense. So uh, not only that, the, but this is actually a nice case study to show you how much the textures influence the likeness, even though there aren't as many wrinkles uh, on the face involved. <clears throat> so we will go through the standard process of just um, um, using the most resembling texture that is available from the, from the cloud. And you might be noticing that the likeness within just the geometry is quite convincing. But as soon as we apply textures, we seem to lose much of it. And uh, this is because the uh, human face recognition apparatus is a nicely tuned part of the brain. And it is not forgiving. So these are the textures of different people. And that's enough to break the illusion. So the, the brain immediately yells, like, that's not the same guy. <clears throat> so the next step is to use his own textures from the scan that we got here. And I've seen people on YouTube, some enthusiasts, doing exactly that. Uh, but they would mostly stop at the color map. So they would do the color map, and then that was it. But 
if you want the real thing, like uh, complete likeness, then you would need to go further. So you would need to author the normal map as well. And not only these two, which are uh, base maps, but you will also need to, to create the animated maps that get fired, fired when, when a certain expression is animated. <clears throat> and to do that, uh, uh, they would need to have like uh, the, the low poly topology, which is fitted perfectly to, to the scan in order to be able to transfer all the information from the scan to the UV space of the low poly uh, topology. So currently, when you download the asset from the Quixel bridge, uh, that asset is not aligned with the scan, which is a problem for them. <clears throat> and then they would uh, try to um, reconcile that. But um, it is not aligned um, because it has been moved, uh, transformed, and adjusted to sit nicely with the body. So that's actually expected. You, you should not be expecting, uh, because the scan can actually be anywhere in the space arbitrarily placed. So, um, but we do need those two to, to be conformed in, in a way so that we can actually transfer the information. But um, then, they would actually do that, yeah. They would uh, take the low poly and just uh, wrap it around the scan and hope for the, for the best. But this is not actually the best solution because it will introduce some uh, inconsistencies. And um, <clears throat> uh, you can see here, uh, this causes the color landmarks not to be aligned with their geometry counterparts. So these images look pretty much the same, but if you pay closer attention, especially the lips on the left one are quite um, off, so uh, they could be aligned better. And that's the most obvious thing, but uh, generally this texture is completely off because we do take uh, a nice care of all the like uh, really important features like the nasolabial fold and uh, other landmarks that need to be always at the same spot. So. This is not a good way to do it. <clears throat> uh, but then, even when they manage to project all the all the map, oh, sorry, even when they manage to project the color, this is still only just uh, just one map. So uh, then they would reuse that one map in place of previously three animated maps as well, and it's understood that this one gets replaced with this one, and then. Uh, the animated, the blood flow maps, as some call them, uh, need to be also replaced with this same one map. So all the maps in the lower row are exactly the same. <laughs> and this is under understandable why you would do that. So you don't want any discrepancy between your uh, base color and the animated color map. So if you kept it like that, you would get like a funky um, animation going on because if he was to do a brow raise, you would get this map activating, and that would be really weird. So, so then they would scrap all the uh, maps that were, da that were downloaded from, from the bridge, and they would uh, use one map instead of previously four maps. <clears throat> so this is fine. You might uh, not require that much of a high fidelity for your project, or you, you don't really need the blood flow maps, but now you need to decide what to do with the normal maps as well. And it is analogous, so uh, if you decide to, to replace them, then you need to author at least one new map, the base map, and then you would also do the same thing. So you would replace the anima animated map for, for the um, uh, normal maps uh, with this just one uh, map. And... Uh, that's going to give you this. So you have now, uh, you, you have the compatible uh, color and normal between themselves because they are coming from the, from the same source. But now you lose all the, all the wrinkles and the expressions suddenly become very unexpressive. So here you can see the original that we downloaded using the original uh, normal map for the brow rays. And here on the, on the right side, we are just reusing the uh, neutral map, which does not have any kind of inf information about that specific expression. And the only thing that is happening there is actually coming from uh, the deformation of geometry. <clears throat> but there's nothing going on uh, on, the, on the surface of the skin. 
So then you might actually keep the normals and replace just the color. And uh, now you, um, the issue there is the discrepancy between the details in the color, which is new map of your own talent, and the, the information that you have on the normal maps, which are uh, downloaded from, from the database and they belong to a different person. So there is no way they can actually be matching. <clears throat> but um, again, if you don't require it, like a highest fidelity or your column map is low resolution anyways, then you, can, then you could even uh, get away with it because you will be relying um, for, uh, for, for the skin tone on the color map, but the details will not be there. So you, you could have the details in normal and that could work. I've, I've seen people do that. So the one thing that is still an issue is that the normal maps uh, contribute greatly to, to a specific likeness. So here you can see the original character's actual brow rays, both in scan and in scan with color on. And the image on the far uh, right there is uh, the one downloaded from, from the database. And obviously, that's, that's way off. That's not the same guy. If he did uh, the brow rays, you would be weirded out. <clears throat> so uh, a person generally looks like you, know, you, you would expect them to. And then if they express a weird smile, it, it can look quite uncanny. So obviously, the best way to approach this is to actually make all the maps from scratch, everything. And uh, luckily, uh, this is something we have done um, a lot, albeit for a different purpose. So back in the day when the, the service business was our most dominant occupation, we had like a, a variety of different uh, rig fidelities to offer. And one of the lowest ones was actually uh, similar to the uh, uh, process we are going to do today. And it's similar in a way that uh, had one thing in common, and that is one single uh, scan input for, for the neutral, and that's it. So we would then process just the neutral. And then we would uh, assemble the author rig from it. And then the author rig would estimate all the other expressions based just on that one neutral. So all these uh, expressions are uh, completely fabricated. And we have like a author rig that uh, uh, it's smart and knows how to do that. But this is not. Um, uh, no artistic time was spent to do this. So this is completely automatic operation. And then we, uh, we were able to, uh, by using minimal resources, we could uh, create, again, AAA characters. And you can actually buy some games, game, games right now that are running those same rigs for their hero characters. And uh, this is especially the case if the, the scan input was not an actual scan, but rather um, a stylized sculpt that came from ZBrush from, from our direction and not from, from a scanner. And in that case, uh, if we are talking creatures or humanoids, uh, that rig was the way to go. So uh, not to digress too much from, from the subject, actually, uh, the, the reason I bring that here today is because this legacy that we used to have uh, when doing that is going to help us actually uh, reproduce that same workflow here for our, our uh, demo, but this time around, we are going to do it only by using the mesh to metahuman. So now that the theory is out of the way, let's uh, do some work. And we're starting here. This is uh, the mesh to metahuman tool, so we fed it with the scan. And this is the automatic solve, so I did not do anything other than just uh, letting it run. And you can trust the tool to, to do the fitting of the landmarks for you, because it does this very well. Uh, it might need a little help around the eyes, because they, they can be tricky sometimes. And I'm not sure if you're noticing, but here, uh, that exactly uh, is the case. So the solve on the right does have like a fold on the upper eyelid, while the character here, the talent, does not have. So uh, he has what we call a monolid. And that means that there is no actual visible uh, fold on the outside. So we needed to fix that. So 
I, I did give, give it a little bit of a help there, and I have put some extra guidelines for the eyes, and also I have put some for the eyebrows and the ears as well, because I found those also to be lacking. So now we, we got much better solve, and we got the, the same uh, monolid uh, state that we wanted to have. So uh, I have chosen the texture that is most resembling of all those that I, I could find to our talent. And you can even see that uh, there are even some acne scars in it, uh, just like we have on the real, real person here. But still, um, it's, it's OK, but it's only a look-alike, so uh, we, can, we can push it some more. So I mentioned earlier that the uh, manual wrapping is actually not uh, the best idea. And it's also unnecessary, too, because you can use a simple uh, expression in the command line. So you can just type mh for metahuman. And as soon as you do that, it will suggest a couple of expressions. And you choose the one for exporting the meshes. And then you type 1 in, in the end. And as soon as you tap Enter, it will start, start saving the files on the disk. So over there, you can see the files that it exported for us. And uh, it will export the same scan that you gave it. Uh, there is the DNA file that you get for every metahuman. Uh, every metahuman has a different DNA uh, file that describes the metahuman. But the most important for us here today is the conformal mesh. So that's the same mesh that was actually fitted to the scan. And now we're using that same one. So we're we are not compromising the position of, of the uh, information on, on the skin. So now we can take that mesh together with the scan and actually project the information from it. So here you can see the result. This is the raw texture projection. And you can see that it has like uh, missing areas and maybe some blurry areas in artifacts and stuff that needs to be uh, corrected. So on the right side, you can see the uh, technically correct uh, texture. And we did that by using uh, either clone stamp or patch in Photoshop or Mari. Uh, but you can also use the metahuman textures to just do some sort of like a transplant of the skin. So that's maybe an easier way to do it. Um, so um, uh, we also did some uh, suppression of the remaining lighting, but that's pretty much it. So now we have the color map ready, and we can move on to normal. So here um, you can see the input, which is the scan, and then the, uh, there is the subdivided low poly, and then in the end we have like a, a projected information from the scan, but also a little bit, uh, we have uh, cleaned it up a little bit. So the process here is the same as the earlier mentioned, the uh, uh, lower fidelity uh, characters that we used to have. Well, actually, for the neutral is the same as for the highest fidelity characters, because we do have all the inputs. But we do not have all the inputs for, for the rest of the expression. So that's why we, we need to downgrade it a little bit. So in ZBrush, we need just to subdivide the topology up to six times to have enough resolution for all the details. Uh, and then we do the cleanup uh, once we project all the information. So you can notice that we uh, got rid of the eyebrows and the hair in general, because it does introduce a lot of noise. <coughs> and uh, also. Uh, a pass uh, by an artist is needed to either use some kind of smoothing or trimming or, or polish brushes to go or once more on, on the final um, sculpt there to, to get rid of the fine noise. <clears throat> and they need to be uh, cautious because they can actually suppress the uh, useful information. So uh, you need to have like a trained eye to, to distinguish what is the useful information from the scan and what is just uh, uh, an undesirable noise. <clears throat> so if you have a displacement, like we do here, that is awesome. And you can see here that the micro microgeo is called our uh, mid-frequency displacement that we use. We get that scanned for us. But if you don't have that, you can uh, create something akin to that from the color map. And we did that also here. But that information is stored in the layer called, called the details. And it's very subtle because it's used for the uh, very fine tertiary uh, frequency information. <clears throat> so, uh, 
So it's it's used from uh, from the map uh, we call a diffuse projection because it's like a color map, but it does have a lot of specular contribution in it, and it is because it is um, captured in the uh, unpolarized circumstances. So uh, this term polarized or cross polarized and unpolarized is like uh, something similar to your uh, sunglasses. So if you have polarized sunglasses, they can clip half of the uh, brightness coming in. And this is the effect that we actually use to our advantage to uh, use those filters on the lens of the camera. And then we get rid of most of the specular for, for the color or albedo, which is uh, a map where we require only the color information and we do not uh, need an excessive lighting in it. But this one, the um, uh, diffuse map, actually does have all that because uh, we did not have any polarizing filters on it. And this is a good thing in this case because it's much contrasty, so the pores look crisp, and therefore you can derive uh, quite useful uh, displacement from it. So if you don't have any other displacement that is actually accurate, you can use this one instead, and it will not be as accurate, but it can do the trick. And then finally, there is even like uh, the accents uh, pass this is done by hand, and you can just, uh, uh, it's artistic pass where you just enhance a little bit of the information from the scan that got suppressed in the uh, C of the high frequency information. So mainly the angle breaks and stuff like that. So when we have both the uh, neutral and the, um, both the normal and the color, we can replace those maps and you can see instantly better likeness to our uh, character that we have started from. Um, so now it's time to do the expressions. And this is done by updating the original um, sculpt for the neutral, and then just updating that with the uh, shape from the rig that does the bra raising action. But all the um, fine information in it are still coming from the neutral. So we need to actually enhance that manually and to fabricate all these layers that you see happening, like the volume, the additional uh, forms, and the directional striations are all done manually. And we try to mimic the real thing. So for example, the directional striations are mimicking the surface tension on the skin in this horizontal uh, direction that is typical for, for this expression. Um, so uh, this is done for every expression, and there are 11 altogether. And you can see here the, the GIFs. Uh, I assume you can uh, uh, tell which GIF state is actually enhanced. And all the difference here is done by hand. So uh, none of this is actually projected from, from the scan, because we, we cannot do that. And we cannot do that because the scan uh, has not been aligned with our topologies here. So uh, it would be, even if it was somewhere close enough, it would be off, it would not be accurate. And we need to uh, have uh, the features that we have in the neutral uh, stay in the same place. So for example, there in the uh, brow rays, you can see in the neutral also, also the wrinkles, and they need to be uh, constant. So we would not get that if we were to project from an uh, inaccurate, uh, inaccurately positioned scan. So um, uh, then we bake out all the maps from those uh, uh, sculpts that we did for the expressions. And here you can see uh, the distribution of all those uh, expressions, how they are um, assembled in the three animated maps, uh, just like uh, you have it in the maps that you download from, from the Quixel bridge. And now that we have uh, those maps, we can replace the original normal maps that were not working for us because they were too different from our character uh, and replace them with the, these new maps that we created that are actually associated with our specific likeness. So far, the most important work is done, but there are still uh, the uh, blood flow maps to be created. And these maps do not contribute as much to the likeness as the uh, neutrals or the animated normal maps. So you could just skip this as we have seen people do. 
However, they do bring up a little bit more of aliveness to your character, and uh, this is a subtle effect. You might notice it consciously, but if it's not there, you kind of feel that something is missing. So we want also these maps to work together with the already prepared normal maps. So the best way to do that is actually to derive um, like a meta uh, information from the normals. And in this case, it's going to be the uh, um, height maps. So the height maps are black and white maps that uh, suggest uh, the elevation of the surface. And we use that to uh, put on top of our uh, base color as a uh, as an overlay blending mode, and then this uh, fakes the impression of tension in the skin and also brings a little bit of the ambient occlusion that you would have anyways, even in, in the real capture data. So uh, finally, the blood flow itself is done also manually uh, by looking at the reference, and uh, it mainly consists on slight hue shifts either towards the red or yellow, depending what you are trying to achieve. So the yellow areas, like on the forehead, would represent the area of the skin where the blood has been pushed out of, while the red areas would be uh, the portions of the skin where the blood has been pushed into. And this is actually a, a pretty convincing, because uh, the uh, captured maps look pretty, pretty similar to this. And, I could even maybe challenge you to, if I didn't already tell you, to, to guess which one is the real one. So this is actually a, a nice way to do it. So uh, that's the hard part. And now we can see the um, difference in the Unreal Engine. So this uh, render on the left is the original uh, MetaHuman identity that we downloaded. We didn't do anything with it. But I did leave the facial hair because it would be weird if it didn't have eyebrows or, or hair. It's only fair to compare apples with apples. And uh, on the right, is uh, it's the same rig and the same lighting scenario, but it has our own uh, bespoke textures in it. But apart from this, we can do a little bit more, although this is like the main uh, thing we were talking about today, the textures. But there is an uh, additional thing that you can do. So uh, here, there is another render. And here, it has been uh, added a blend shape on top of everything on the rig uh, to conform the skull shape, skull shape sorry, uh, to look more like the one in, in the uh, scan and not the one that is parametric that you saw before. So. Um, uh, this is done by importing the uh, lowest subdivision level from the ZBrush and then just uh, applying that as a blend shape on, on globally on top of the, the rig. But then you run into a risk of maybe ruining some of the expressions. And I'm not sure if you have uh, seen that, but uh, I'm going to play it again. So you might notice that uh, around the uh, lips, there is going to be an artifact of uh, protruding uh, gums or teeth through the lips there. And this is the consequence of doing that. So, you know, you, uh, there is upside of having uh, even better likeness, but you could um, compromise some of the expressions. And then you would need either to uh, correct that in the animation or just go straight to that specific expression and, and correct it. But uh, the thing with this, is that uh, this is something that cur currently requires a little bit of advanced rigging knowledge. So uh, at this point, is only like a bonus uh, edit. And uh, also, it runs you with, with the risk of uh, maybe ruining some expressions. So use it at your own discretion. And also, it's not easy to do. Because it's easy to do it in Maya. But to, to uh, get that back in the Unreal, it would require some advanced uh, knowledge. So there's that. And with more uh, democratization of our tools that we use currently in-house, but they will be uh, eventually shared with the community, uh, this kind of edits will be um, at disposal to the uh, ordinary users as well. So one final general comparison. Uh, this is the scan. Uh, in the middle is the uh, metahuman identity 
we did not change anything about it. And then in, in the end, we have the um, edited, enhanced, same version of that, but with the additional new uh, bespoke maps, and also with that additional blend shape that uh, did conform the skull shape uh, to the scan, so you can see that it's much more interesting. Um, so uh, this uh, concludes my case for uh, authoring bespoke textures. Thank you.